Um, I guess the old question I was trying to figure out what people are probably going to be asking me was, if you've been here 23 times um, throughout history, what was your favorite life and why? Um, my favorite life um, was a couple different ones, but I think the problem in my life was for most of them are very short. Um, this is my longest life I've ever had, but I don't like it that much um, because I feel that this life is, it just feels like a dead end, okay? And it feels that I don't, um, you know, I don't feel confident in this, in this life right now. But since the question was, what is my favorite life, um, I'd have to say when I was working in the scullery in a um, medieval castle in England. Um, actually, you worked in a castle in France, wasn't it? Um, yeah, it was uh, a few, it was um, actually around, it was late, late Middle Ages. Um, but I did, you know, I enjoyed it. It was a wonderful time. I, you know, the pomp and the circumstance and the royal court. And even though I just worked in the kitchen washing the dishes and the, and the stuff like that, the cookware, it was still just a wonderful time to enjoy. Um, you know, occasionally mingling, you know, in the scullery with, you know, you know, people, or what if I wasn't washing dishes and stuff, or cleaning the kitchen, um, I would be, you know, sometimes cleaning the great banquet halls, and I got a chance to, um, or some, you know, or the floors, and I get a chance to meet some of the um, aristocracy. Most of the time, unfortunately, they tended to look down at you because you were just nothing more than just a knave, but there was... There were a few good, kind-hearted people, and I, I enjoyed, um, you know, talking with them just as I do today. Um, I, I still have a lot of affinity for the dishwashing of pots and pans, but you know, the biggest problem is is that uh, things automation it just doesn't really feel the same anymore. You know, automation you just put a rack of dishes in and close the door and it does it all by itself. Yeah, and then, and, and it's kind of, or if it's an animation dishwasher, you put them on the racks, you know, the dishes in the racks, and then they go through this big conveyor belt to the machine, and it comes out the other side. Uh, really, not really that exciting of a life. Yeah. And what, what was your favorite time? Oh... Uh, me, I think I had a couple of good times. I I enjoyed, you know, serving the Roman ir the Roman army many, many, many thousands of years ago uh, as a centurion. I enjoyed, um, you know, defending Rome. It was great, but you know the the Roman army is hard life, and it really was um, really tough on on your feet, especially carrying all that armaments like in the course the gladius and the other weapons and the shields it really was very very um challenging to be a a roman footman in the roman empire um uh, but it was it was fun but just um you got treated good but you really got you had to work hard to do it what was your worst life <sighs> Uh, um, I have to think back now. Um, let's see. My worst life. Um, dying during childbirth. Um, back in the 17th century. That's probably the worst. Because... That just wasn't the kind of medical technology we have today, and so, and, and I was being raised 
and I mean my husband was a real asshole so I really had a hard time he used to say I was too domineering and too much of a pig-headed slut but the truth was is I was just you're naturally masculine type soul so you're going to be more of a domineering person anyway yeah what was your worst life Um, they were all pretty bad. Um, being raped in World War II in France, France Mahler certainly goes under the pretty bad situations. I didn't really like that very much at all. I felt that I was, here I was, I was a very nice Parisian girl I could have had. It was funny. Your name is Michelle Dento. My name is Michelle Dento. You're right. And it was the funny thing. At, um, at all my lives were very short, you know. Like, for example, when I was working in the scullery, I, I, I died of uh, tuberculosis. And so, I mean, I suffered a lot of hardships. And uh, this life here where I'm living now is probably um, the best life I've ever had uh, as far as health goes. And also... Um, you know longevity but it's not really um but as far as excitement goes uh let's put it this way um it really isn't so exciting because you you gotta understand like, that this is a life where everything's automated there's not even really any reason to do feel that we need the human being anymore because human beings have become expendable um that sounds like something for uh one of your channel videos yeah, but, you know, I think we should talk about briefly here because, you know, even when I was working in the scullery, you know, in the 16th century, it really was a very, we were essential. I mean, you needed the scullery. You needed the scullery worker uh, that kept the, the pots and the pans clean, that cleaned the floors, that made sure that, you know, the, the servants, you know, the service was served on clean tables. Because we used to eat out of these tables. They were trussel tables. In other words, there would be the, the the insets were in the tables where all the food would be placed. We didn't use tablecloths back in the 15th century, 16th century. Sorry, um, but the fact is that you know there was we're beginning to um, haven't quite gotten to the point yet where with the French, um, you know, with 16th and his wife had coming up with cookware such as the butter knife and stuff like that. We tend to forget that. Um, but the, so people kind of wanted to have the trestle table clean so that when they put the swords and their daggers down, which they'd be eaten with, that they at least they would have, uh, be sure that um, it was a clean surface to place their utensils in. You know, that brings a question. Did, was there ever often, um, with all that sharp metal, was there ever a time when somebody would actually kill somebody at the dinner table um yes it has happened unfortunately um people you know remember you got a sharp piece of steel you know you you, you, know, you usually use your dagger or your dirk for you know like a fork or you use your fingers or you use both but still having that sharp steel at your ready side or iron which often cases the little, little, little inferior blades or made out of in more inferior metals, but basically, still, uh, if someone decided to shove a stiletto between your rib cage, uh, it didn't matter if it was made out of steel or if it was made out of iron, you still bled. Yeah, you still died. You still died. So yeah, you you really. So it was very important. That's why we have manners. Um, is to keep the conversation at the table from getting to the point where. Um, that somebody wants to draw someone else's blood, but uh, it did happen back then. And only the 16th wife, um, Marie Antoinette, know that, and that's one of the reasons why she insisted on having uh, cutlery for uh, the people to use during uh, Louis the 16th's reign. That's when the butter knife and the, the standard fork and the spoon, the spoon already existed, but the other utensils were kind of. Um, you know, didn't exist except, like I said, you provide your own knife 
and you would use that along with your fingers to eat food. It's hard to believe, but it's true. I, you still do that today. I see you eat salad with your bare fingers. Old habit. Yeah, I see you do it though. It's crazy. You go in there, you go, click, 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 and like you don't even think about it. And you're really fast. Uh, I know. Um, but you know, like you said, you, you died in, in miscar. You died in, uh, you know, in childbirth and. Um, in the 17th century, I mean, obviously that must have been really sucky for you. That guy was a bastard. I hated the guy. He was awful. He just, what he wanted was, he was such a domineering slug. And yet he was calling me a domineering slug. Because I am a masculine spirit. So unfortunately, I don't tolerate crap. Somebody sitting down, I'm just, I just got mad and I used to fight all the night long. Oh, God. So... You know, you guys, of course, we fight too. Yeah, we do, but I think it's more like when we fight, it's like we know, um, you, you know, it's true. We Just like any couple, we fight. But I think that um, it was very different back then because, you know, I thought my integrity was being questioned. Oh, okay. Yeah, your integrity, of course, is the thing... You know, to a, a masculine spirit. That's your pride. You don't really like having that bruised. No, I did not like having it bruised by anybody. Now, let me ask you a question. That's the next question. I'm sure that you're asking this. Okay. Are we mad? Are we over the bend? Are we over the deep side? No, because um, you and I have talked to many people in the mental health community and they have confirmed that there definitely is no uh, multiple personality type of um, circumstances. There is no stressors. There is no escapism. There's no uh, escape mechanism. What that means is that in a typical multiple personality disorder interaction, only one entity shows up at a time. The other one does. It's just like the other one fades out, and then it's kind of like that uh, Beyonce and Sasha Fierce. Yes, exactly. That's exactly what that type of multiple personality disorder type condition that they're normally worried about. Beyonce versus Sasha Fierce. Because um, Beyonce, it's herself, it's pretty easy going by Sasha Pierce's. And, you know, Beyonce says she's just a stage persona. Beyonce doesn't seem to really uh, recognize when Sasha Pierce is, uh, in effect, what's going on. Yeah, I think that's a really interesting question. <laughs> 